here we are. We have our time lapse embossed sort of perimeter figured out. And now we're going to talk about cool tricks and textures you can use to apply to your piece. But first, what if you want to put on your own design? Um, if you're a nerd like me, you want your own custom thing. And, um, well, I already have some. This is what I want to put on my back so that it looks like that, except out of leather. It's going to be a long lecture in the sense that I'm not going to argue with you about this. You'll figure it out on your own. The leather scissors suck at cutting paper. You can try it. They will cut. But paper scissors will do it a little better. And paper scissors are terrible at cutting leather. So generally I find it's easier to use the right tool for the job. But if you're feeling young and rebellious or old and rebellious or just rebellious, I mean, a lot of that's been going around, um, feel free to use the scissors that you want to. And eventually, out of sheer laziness, you'll probably end up going back to the paper scissors. So I'm just cutting out my circle because as much as I'd like to think I have a really good idea of how to get this random block of white paper out of the way of my design, um, I think the closer I get to my circular pattern, the better off I'm gonna be. Okay, so when you go to take your circular pants pattern to do your transfer, you're gonna have to set it on your design and then determine, do I want this side up or do I want that side up? And really, it's an aesthetic choice. Does that look better or does that look better? You have to ask yourself, oh, I don't know, well, I kind of like this or I kind of like that. When you figure it out, pick it, run with it, that's fine. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our sort of drawing and we're gonna use, doesn't matter which tool, it can be your, your pointy or your sharpie or your metal pointy could be a ballpoint pen without ink. It's all going to work, but um, I'm just going to use the tiny ones because this thing has little tiny eyeballs. And I chose the little tiny eyeballs because those are my registration marks. So I know if for any reason I'm not sure I did it right, I'm trying to line stuff up with the eyeball shape on my part. So the trick here is we're just trying to outline our perimeter and that's done by a process called stippling, where you just press down around your design so you have a good perimeter and you know what you have to fill and what you don't have to fill in order to get your highs and your lows. So this technique is used in drawing all the time by people who are bored out of their mind, have nothing but spare time. I don't know anyone with spare time right now, you know, just trapped at home with nothing to do. But uh, if I did know someone like that, uh, maybe this would be a good thing to do in their spare time. So I'm just tracing out my crane pattern. And I would like to point out that if you were smart, you would be taping this to your design. But if it's wet, it may not stick. So for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to show you how to put this whole thing together in one flat shot without moving. And that is emotionally exhausting, so if you're not sure how to pull that off, feel free to grab some tape and just tape it down. Um, you can use double stick tape, you can take your masking tape and fold it over and press it on, but I would do it on a test piece of wet leather and make sure whatever mechanism you're using to hold it together actually sticks, otherwise you're in for a wonderful letdown. So I've got the perimeter of one crane outlined and I'm just trying to follow my circle. Again, this isn't going to have to be perfect. You're going to come back and you're going to color it all in with your burnisher, whether it's the Sharpie or the agate burnisher or this tiny little metal tool. Whatever you're going to use is fine. And uh, the funny thing is don't expect your your paper to survive this. It's not going to be usable at the end of this. It's going to have a hundred thousand little holes punched in it. It's going to be wet paper. So if you've ever heard, you know, couldn't escape a wet paper bag, I think you can understand what you're 
template's gonna look like afterwards. But if you got a printer at home, just you know, a two D printer, not like not like a three D printer over there. You can just make whatever design you want, and then take the time to emboss it. So let's see if I can keep this all together. So here we go. So we've done this entire perimeter, and I'm going to set it down and then do the rest on a time lapse. 